where do we find a Hebrew culture in West Africa? Mm, good before, question. You know, before European had contact with us. And where do we find the Hebrew culture in the early Americas and in South America and the Caribbeans? Where does that culture transfer from Africa and get taken over? Like, I, I haven't seen it. I've seen Yoruba, Ibu. I've seen several um, Vood, Badum. I, don't, I just don't see any presence of Hebrew. Can somebody answer that for me? I wanted to share something with y'all because I hear this all the time. People are like, oh, you're not an Israelite. You're from West Africa. Y'all were sold as slaves and die. Just get over it. Do your research. So y'all know what I did? I did my research. So you're going to go on loc.gov. That's Library of Congress. Dot gov is a legit site. You're going to type in Negro land in the search bar, click enter, and you're going to come across a map. Click that map. And this map was created by cartographer Emmanuel Bowen back during the 1700s. So he ain't have Google back then. So he had to have known where everybody was located to create this map. So we see we're on the West coast of Africa. This was in the thick of the slave trade. And we see we have the gold coast and we have the slave coast where we was sold right as slaves all right cool so what does that say above slave coast where it says the k kingdom of what kingdom of judah let me scroll out make sure my eyes aren't deceiving me and then let me scroll back in and what does it say kingdom of judah yeah it's still there oh okay i mean <laughs> you can't make this stuff up y'all and the next reference also confirms that the children that were taken to the west coast of Africa resided in the kingdom of Judah. As the following quote reads, it reads, Wida or Judah or a Judah is a city old, frequented since the 16th century by the Portuguese slavers who gave it its name. Its inhabitants were said to be Judaic, and they were indeed considered as a remnant of the scattered tribes of Israel. Is made up of 606 feet, 606 feet, 606 feet, 606 feet. 606. It's made up of staves, exactly the same. Now, if that's not interesting enough, look at the angle of the Great Pyramid of Giza. If you take the angle of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the slope is 51.8 degrees. Let's go back to the earthworks. If you measure the line that goes straight through the center of the structure, right here, and then you'll go true north. It's 51.8 degrees. That angle is exactly the same angle as the pyramids of Giza. It is the same math, the same calculations as ancient Egyptians. This is the Bat Creek Stone. It was found during the course of an official Smithsonian evacuation. The Smithsonian didn't understand the, uh, uh, the meaning of the writing on the stone. They thought it was Cherokee, since it came from Cherokee country. They didn't realize that it's actually Hebrew. They had published this originally upside down. They threw it in a box at the bottom of the Smithsonian, put it in the basement. Many years later, a scholar took it out of the box, looked at it, and went, oh my gosh, it's upside down. It's Phoenician, ancient Hebrew. So what's going on here? What is that about? Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah, Kodash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and blessing to the elect of Israel. All right, with Great Millstone, all right, you know, these are the brothers in Charlotte, and I'm the brother Kazak. All right, we together back at you once again with an installment of truth. All right, once again, giving all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. That's right. What you see before you is the Bad Creek Stone found in uh, Bad Creek, Tennessee. 
okay? And basically, really it's an incomplete writing because it's a small piece of a much larger uh, piece of writing, okay. all right? And basically, when you look at it, this is Paleo-Hebrew. Okay. This is ancient Hebrew, but the mystery is, see Esau, he claims he doesn't know what it says, mm -hmm. and they'll lie to you, they'll tell you it's a hoax, okay? Do you pull up that, the first one you got? Because see, when you look at the beginning of it, now Hebrew is read from right to left. Now when you look at those first two characters, it's hard to uh, pretty much make out what they say, you know, because that doesn't look like uh, paleo, and you're gonna find out it's really not uh, paleo, but it's still Hebrew. Now the rest is paleo, all right, but we have those two characters to break down to you uh, what that says. Okay. Well, can, uh, can you get the, uh, the screenshot? Yeah, gotcha. Okay. It's the very first one. Gotcha. Yeah, and I'm just short. Look. Now, when you look at that, that says Quataza. All right. Now, you, you see it in the Paleo on the right, and it's in the Assyrian on the left. Okay. It says Quataza, and, and it means end, end at the end of time, end of space. Okay. Now, so when you look at this on the right, it says Quataza, which means at the end of time, and then the rest says. La Yehawadah. Bokeh Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live. And this morning, guys, uh, we saw an incredible story on uh, breaking Israel news. And that is that um, they have discovered the oldest Ten Commandments written in Paleo-Hebrew on a stone, a huge I think it's an 80 ton stone, if I'm not mistaken, on the size of that found in New Mexico of all places. Now, Paleo Hebrew, guys, has been out of use for some maybe 500 years before uh, the modern era, the coming of Christ. And so, for a Paleo stone, to, or excuse me, a stone to be found with Paleo, the Ten Commandments of the Paleo Hebrew to be found inside of New Mexico, lets us know that there is a lot of truth that, yes, indeed, there is a relationship between the, um, the Native Americans and the House of Israel in exile. So uh, I just think it's fascinating. I know that there was a lot of st uh, belief that uh, there are uh, DNA uh, references to, or not DNA, but so much as, but uh, I think a small DNA portion of the Jewish people related to the Cherokee Indians, but also there's been other artifacts found among the Cherokee Indians. So now in New Mexico, so we can see the House of Israel has certainly been scattered to the four winds of the earth as the prophecy was stated.